Hey guys, welcome to another installment to my Dayak uh, Classic Review video series. Today we are going to talk about Spirit Masters on Midgard. Uh, really cool caster class, a lot of cool stuff you can do with them. Uh, we're going to look at spec lines, specs, RAs, um, some couple strategies, and uh, maybe some template ones. Um, templates are pretty subjective, so we'll see. Anyway, let's hop into game. We're on my SM here. And all right, so we'll go ahead and take a look at specs. Um, it's been a while since I played this sim, so I'll be uh, doing a little refresher course as we go to myself. So my spec is 47 darkness, uh, 26 expression. So I lose a couple things by not going 50 darkness, but I gain some other stuff in expression that we'll talk about here in a second. First off, let's go through the darkness spec line. This is the spec line with your live tap and your uh, your resist debuffs and things like that. So it is called spirit dimming. There we go. So we'll go ahead and go to the uh, the top end of it. We have our live tap, and this is a 2.5 second 199 delve live tap with a 90% return. This thing is strong. Hits really hard, um, and also has a huge health return from it being 90% return. I think we're gonna duel with my bot. We'll just nuke it once. Actually, let's buff ourselves too here. Actually, let's just throw on these double full buffs. Okay, so as you can see here, hitting pretty dang hard. Let's increase this a bit. Now, keep in mind, my Shaman's not in a great template. It has 14% cold resist. This is cold damage. So I'll be hitting harder against this guy than I would elsewise. otherwise, but I only have yellow acuity too, so, so I guess it works a little bit both ways. Um, so yeah, hard hitting spell, it's great, especially if you're in a group, um, if you happen to be in a group with a rune carving RM that can debuff cold resist. Um, if you're in the uh, RC RM, rune carving RM's group, this is gonna be, you're gonna be assisting that guy, he's gonna be cold debuffing, you're gonna be hitting for a lot. Um, so use that in those situations. Probably use this when you're soloing. Um, just gonna hit really hard. So also great if you need health back, obviously, because you get a lot back. Also, if you're mocking, uh, master concentration allows you not to be interrupted. You have mock five. You use this. You'll be doing a lot of damage and keeping yourself alive with that. So that's what a lot of SMs tend to do solo or small man or even groups. Um, next, the next most important spell you have in this line is called um, Extinguish Spirit. Now what this is, is a 50% debuff to spirit um, resist. So this is, combo is great with your baseline spirit nuke. Um, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but this is kind of a combo type deal. So what you do is you use Extinguish Spirit and then you use Death of Souls, your baseline spirit nuke and you hit for a lot um, you'll also allow your if you're in a group with a an rm or a bone dancer they can use a spirit baseline debuff or baseline nuke and hit for a ton as well so you'll a lot of the times in spirit trains you'll be the uh, ma the main assist so you'll debuff something and then everyone's going to uh, spirit nuke it and it's going to hurt um, so that's the combo your baseline spirit nuke and your uh spirit debuff in your um, darkness line uh, you also get a body debuff does the same thing decreases their uh, buyers by 50 percent now this isn't quite as cool for damage however you can cc a lot longer with this and we'll get into this in a little bit um, but you do have a mez um, and you do have a root they're both body damage this is going to add duration to those roots because um, duration on CC works um, in, the, in the way that they're affected by things like determination, which lower the timer, but they're also lowered the duration of the CC by resist. So if you have 25% buy resist, you're you know cutting into the uh, the overall duration of the CC. So for example, we'll body debuff this guy. Hopefully he doesn't resist, and then we'll root him. And this root lasts for literally a minute and 50 seconds. That's one minute, 50 seconds of this guy being out of the fight since you casted. Keep in mind, this is a minute and 13 second route. I have 25% duration and stuff like that, but it completely takes away resist. Um, so my Shaman only has 20% body generally, but um, or right now, uh, with no, no 
uh, resist buffs, but this is this is especially useful to do when you're using things like roots. So a lot of the times you'll uh, you'll body debuff and then use your baseline root, which is also in your suppression baseline. We'll get to that in a little bit, I guess. But uh, so this is a great combo, especially against debt tanks. If you root a debt tank or mezza debt tank, it's gonna last 10 seconds. But if you debuff root it, it's gonna last you know another five, six, seven seconds. So that's pretty strong. Let's go ahead and break this root so I can keep in mind that root lasted a minute and 50 seconds with the debuff. In about a minute, we'll go back and root this guy without immunities and see how much it does. So debuff, body debuff CC is good. And we'll get into this mez that you have later. Um, it's also body damage, but body debuff root is gonna be your big thing. Um, the next really important thing is this AOE dex quick debuff. 69 value, AOE, seven second reuse. Just a great, great way to take away someone's cast speed or their swing speed and damage and, and things like vamps and, and thrust type, um, people that rely on decks for their damage. So it debuffs their attack speed, their damage. Um, it interrupts, or not interrupts, but it debuffs healers, cast speed, casters, cast speed, it's great. Use this whenever you can on a caster or a healer and even pretty much anyone, but a lot of times you'll you'll use this on casters um, if you can because it's usually harder to get casters with this because you'll probably be further away in fights. But if you get within 1500 range of someone, just throw out that dex quick debuff. Also, combo with your base dex debuff. Uh, that's in one of your baselines. Um, Going to be in darkness baseline. We'll get to that in a little bit, but just know you have a baseline dex debuff and a dex quick debuff. They stack. You see my shaman's dex quick debuff, and we'll use a little normal cast time spell. That was a 3.0 second cast time spell. See how long it's taken to cast? That's devastating, that cast speed. Um, anyway, next we'll look at this little mez right here. It's a PBOE mez. It's very short duration. It's only a 29 second, I say very short. It's it's pretty dang short. Um, I think it does have fall off, so you're gonna wanna get it on, on top of someone. It's a two second cast time, so it's super fast cast. It's It's pretty awesome for getting quick CC out. Um, so use this when you, uh, you have a few tanks on you, keep in mind, it's going to give mez immunity. So don't use no things you're trying to mez out for a long duration. Cause this, this is not going to be your long duration mez, but it's good. Like if you get popped by much stealthers and you want to use that real quick, if you quick cast, it's going to be a slower cast time, but the, uh, the normal cast time on this is super quick. Let's touch on that root again real quick. So let's try to root my shaman. Keep in mind after I debuffed it last time, it was a minute and 50 seconds. The non-debuff root lasts a minute and 11 seconds. So that gives you 40 seconds for free for debuffing. Super strong to debuff and then CC something. So anyway, uh, sorry, I just remember that because the shaman's immunity faded. Also, you get a uh, in place, not in place, but if you want to, you can use an AOE mez. It's a range standard AOE mez. It lasts 28 seconds. Um, this one's PBOE mez. This is targeted AOE. So you can just AOE mez like that. Um, like I said, not a, an incredibly long duration, but it'll get the job done. But don't use this on targets you're trying to get long duration CC on. Um, and then you get an energy debuff. This will help you if you're debuffing for Thanes or things like Warlocks. There's a spec with the Warlock with an energy nuke. Um, if you're debuffing for Thanes and Warlocks in your group, you're probably going to want to go for 49 Darkness because you want the red one. But that's pretty much just tailored to certain group setups. If you're not playing with Thanes very often, don't worry about it. Or if Thanes aren't assisting you, then, then don't worry about it. And then other than that, you get a, uh, you still get this, yeah, you get a pet. So you can charm a pet, a level 50 pet, um, and just have it as your own. But what you're gonna be using is your baseline pet anyway, because it's a lot better now. And we'll get to that in a second. But you can charm, you know, a grunt or a Templar or something if you so choose to. And that's going to do it for your, your darkness spec line. Really powerful line. Um, a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, next, we're going to go to our secondary line, suppression. I have 26 suppression spec. This is going to be your PBOE line. Uh, but the reason you subspec this is because it helps your baseline um, spirit nuke, since that's in the baseline suppression line. And having more points into that is going to lower the variance when you are using it. So when you're using your debuff nuke like that, you spirit debuff and then use your baseline um, suppression nuke, your 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 uh, your variance isn't gonna be all over the place, so that's important to have suspect into here. But what you do get that's really nice is at level twenty four you get this mez. 
oops, the wrong thing. You get this mez. It's a 40 second mez. It's only blue con, but still a long duration mez. Um, so if you have to mess something out in the back, instead of using your AOE mez, which lasts 29 seconds, use this one. Also, you can debuff for it. So I use my body debuff and then I mez. Or is this, let's see, body debuff and then mez. There we go. And now I mez for literally a minute with this mez. And I think it, it, it'll last for around 40 seconds. So I get an extra 20 seconds by debuffing. Um, it's a pretty decent mez. Um, your aug healer or your pack healer single target mez is gonna be better, but this isn't that bad, especially if you debuff for it. So if you're fighting a group and you have an armsman and a merc pushing in, you can debuff mez the armsman and then nuke the merc down, for example, as a little strat. You also get a, a hasty buff. Oops, yeah, here we go. Hasty buff, 23 second hasty buff. Um, it shares a timer with your dex quick debuff and your strength con debuff. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so you're gonna have to choose what to use, but if you can, hit him with a, hasty, or a, a dex quick debuff and then in a few seconds, hit him with a, a hasty buff. And then if you have PVT, they're gonna really struggle to hit you. Uh, you also get a strength con debuff, AOE strength con debuff. Takes away a little bit of their strength con. Good for debuffing tanks damage, also their hit points. So if you're just going for a kill, maybe just use the strength con debuff because it's gonna take away some hits. Um, you also get a PBOE, low level. Good for clearing things like Zo pets, um, maybe clearing some earth pets. You'll have to use this a couple times to clear the earth pets, but if there's like five on your healer, you're not gonna want a single target nuke all those earth pets down. So use this. Um, you get a life transfer, just transfer some of your health to your, your friend, not huge. You also get, and very importantly, a demez. So this is just a standard, your friend gets mez, you cast a demez on them, and then they're, they're free to go. You can demez your pet, things like that. Um, but yeah, that, so that's pretty much it for that line. If you wanna go suppression, you can. Well, look at that. Pretty much the only, the big thing is your your values on the P-Bay are a lot higher. It's your standard, just hard hitting P-Bay. Um, your baseline nuke's gonna hit park is it's gonna have no variance. Um, you're not gonna hit as hard as darkness because you can't debuff for that baseline nuke and you don't have that life tap that just hits hard in general without a debuff. But um, yeah, and you're gonna get a long duration mess. So, but you won't be able to body debuff for it. So it's kind of a whatever. So this is pretty much, you get a better strength con and hasty buff also, which are both good. But uh, I don't think uh, suppression is a great spec to go like 50 suppression or 49 suppression in, in RVR just because I don't value PBAOE very much. Maybe in like a Zerg keep warfare, it's okay. But I think darkness is going to be your main RVR spec. And it's going to be something similar to what I am now, which is 47 darkness and 26 suppression. You can change that a little bit. You can go like 49 darkness and maybe still get um, that mez, but, and that's for if you're playing with Thane and you need that energy debuff. But anyway, that's gonna do it for that line. Um, I'm gonna go over to my other SM here, and this is gonna show the uh, the summoning line. Actually, let's go back, sorry. I'm hopping all over the place, but I forgot to go over the baselines, which are very important. Um, well, we'll look at darkness. You get two spells in here, you get a cold nuke. You won't use this pretty much ever. Uh, and you get a baseline dex quick debuff, or dex debuff, sorry, not dex quick. So that just takes away their dex. It's great. Use that with your dex quick debuff. It's going to completely get their dex. And that's it for darkness. Um, suppression, you get your standard um, armor factor buff. So always keep this up. It's a 20 minute buff. You're going to want to have this up. If not, you get hit for a billion. At level 41, you get a, uh, oops, you get a 10 um, melee absorb. Same thing, keep it up all the time. You're gonna get hit really hard, last forever. And then you get a blade turn at some point. Yeah, it's in summoning. We'll get to that in a second. Also in this line, you get your, that spirit baseline nuke I was talking about. That's in this line, that's the spell right here. Use it with your uh, spirit debuff and it hits a lot harder. Well, if it doesn't resist. Oh my gosh, there we go. You see it hits a bit harder. My shaman doesn't have great resist anyway, but you can see there's a quite a substantial damage difference, 417 versus 570, so. Um, you also get a root, a minute, 13 seconds. It's that root we used earlier. You can use your body debuff with it and then root them out forever. Let's see, there we go. And root, and he's out for a minute and 50 seconds. 
and you get a base strength debuff so use that on tanks to debuff their damage things that are strength based will be good there and that's going to do it for suppression the interesting line is going to be summoning um now you get a variety of different pets in this line um th that's going to be the main thing in this line is, are your pets so let's look at this spirit valkyrie see what it does so we summon that we summon this little valkyrie um, and you can get it to attack your, your friend. It's going to run over and just hit him. I think this might, I don't know if this heals you. Um, I'll have to test that in a second because I'm, I'm curious myself. I don't know. Let's see if it's like back stuns. I don't think so. It will windmill. windmill. And it roundhouses. So it does, okay, so this is going to be your damage pet. If it can get these two uh, styles off, it's going to hit pretty hard for a pet, especially being unbuffed. So, um, so I guess use this for melee damage. I doubt it's super tanky, and I'm not sure if it heals. Let's check real quick. Let's just do some damage to myself. Okay, yep, it's going to heal. So it heals for a small amount. Nothing to, it's not going to keep you alive really in a fight, but it will heal you a little bit. 118 is what's healing me for now. Next, let's look at a uh, shaman pet. See what this thing does. So all these pets do something a little bit different. So we can put this pet, it's gonna attack, it's gonna, let's see, it's gonna cast on you. It'll probably cast things like disease and maybe some dots. Okay, yeah, so that's a disease and I don't know if I root as well, he's rooting me in, but. Okay, so it does root. Okay, so you can use this pet to root if you can't root yourself. And it's just gonna sit here and spam roots and disease. So it roots and diseases, so it's a great way to interrupt while applying some CC. This is okay if you're um, if you're not gonna be able to root off yourself and you need a pet to do it. But um, yeah, just keep that in mind. It also heals for about 200, so it's gonna be a lot better at healing than the Valkyrie. It's a more support-oriented pet. It doesn't do damage, but it does heal and CC. So let's release that. Let's see what else we got. Have an RM, and this is gonna do caster damage. Um, it's a great interrupting. This is great for groups, probably. Sits back and just nukes. Let's give it some dexes. Oops, that hurt. So it nukes and also cold debuffs. So it's going to increase your life tap damage. All right, so he's cold debuffed now. And we're going to nuke him once. So I get 590. Actually, let's, let's turn on my Shaman's Resist so I can show you a more accurate um, display a damage because most people you fight in RVR are going to have some sort of resist, whether it be from CLs or from their group mates. Okay. So without the debuff, we nuke for 460 baseline, as you can see here. Now let's have the shaman nuke him once and it's going to call debuff. Okay, I don't think the debuff applied. Resisted something. Yeah, it did. Okay. So remember, 460 was our last nuke. Now we nuke for 555, so it's a 15% debuff, so it's going to increase your damage. Also, it's a nuke um, from range. And I think it might even be a snare nuke. Um, right now, my shaman's rude immune, so okay. He's not rude immune anymore, so we'll put him on auto run. We'll put the pet on him. Okay, it's not a snare nuke. I was, I was incorrect. I saw it resisting something, and he was rude immune, so I was a little bit confused. Anyway, this is going to be a pet to interrupt from range and help you increase your damage. Um, but the, actually, instead of talking about that, let's do this Hunter next. I no clue what the Spirit Hunter does. I don't see it very often. Okay, so it's, it's a pet with its own pet. So we'll send it in. It's going to shoot him and probably send this little Spirit Avatar after my Shaman. Um, let's buff it. So it's kind of cool. You have a, uh, a melee eruptable pet as well as a ranged ruptable pet. So the damage isn't great on it. As you can see here, it's pretty low, but you, you gotta deal with two pets, I guess. Um, I'm gonna kill this this uh, wolf pet with my shaman just to see if this pet will resummon his pet if it dies. I'm curious, I'm not sure if it does. It's not looking like it. Okay, so I guess once his pet dies, you need to uh, cast a new one. And you need to release it to cast both of them. So then you get both of them again. Okay. So that's interesting to know. One of the, for solo and small man play, this pet is so good, Spirit Warrior. 
because one, it's pretty tanky, um, which is nice. And two, it stuns. It will like side and back stun with the shield. So we have him, he's just gonna start hitting my, I don't think he's gonna anytime stun, but he's just swinging away on my little guy. But as soon as I give him my backer side, he should he should stun me. So yeah, boom, paralyzes. And that's gonna be a six second stun. So then I can sit here on my SM and just nuke away. The, uh, the good thing about it being tanky as well is SMs have a chance for your pet to intercept melee attacks. So let's let's get let's get the pet together with me. Come here, little pet. Why are you not on top of me? Okay. So now we'll have the the shaman just melee me. As you can see here, it says spirit warmer spirit warrior steps in front of squinks and takes a blow. So I, ha I actually haven't been hit here. So I can just spam spam cast like these could be life taps, you know. And he, he hasn't hit me yet. He's literally only hit the pet. So the pet blocks a lot of attacks. Okay, that's the first time that the shaman has actually hit me instead of the pet. So as you can see here, I'm just going to spam Demez. So you can see how strong this is. And if this pet stays alive, you can see the pet's taking a little bit of damage. Obviously, the shaman's not going to kill it, mailing it. But these could be life taps. And if this is some, I don't know, um, like mercenary or something that's swinging away and it can't interrupt me, I is probably dead by now with life taps. So this is a super strong pet to use because it doesn't die and allows you to um, it steps in front of you it intercepts for you allows you to just free cast or at least stay alive um, and also I tell it to attack and it's going to side stun him here in a little bit okay so it uses mangle that's an 8 second slam or 8 second stun actually I don't know if it actually is 8 seconds 6 seconds I believe it says mangle mangle is actually 8 seconds but I guess spirit mangle is six seconds so i guess both of the stuns are gonna be six seconds regardless it's a six second stun out of your pet intercepts for you is tanky so it's not going to die um quickly so keep that in mind that's a great strat just use that with life taps use that to keep yourself alive in fights or to free yourself up and then you just get a little casted pet heal um in this so you can see my pet's at 68% down here, and now I've healed him for 300, 288, and whatever. It's got some variance on it. And then I have a pet Demos. So it should stay Demos for my pet. I could always target it and cast my normal Demos on it, but this is a little bit faster. It's 1,000 range, though, so it's not very far. Just keep that in mind. Also, get a blade turn. Just absorbs one single melee hit. Cool. Most casters get that. Also, you get a, this is something a little different. You get a group armor factor buff. It's only 25, but it stacks with spec AF and things like that. Great. Gives your group a little bit extra armor factor. Makes your group a little more tanky. And that's going to do it for the baseline. Um, that's So that's what all I get in that spec. That 47 dark, 26 up. There's another spec you can go. It's called summoning. I don't think it's very good, but it's good for PvE, actually. Good for PvE, but maybe, uh, maybe not the best for RVR. Um... We'll go through it here. As you can see here, this guy's 50 summoning. The main thing it gives you is it gives your pet a damage shield, a focus damage shield. So let's get our pet. It's just, so we're PvE in. I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about the spec line because it's literally just for PvE. So you have your pet here, cool. And then you can cast this focus damage shield on it. And whenever a monster hits it, it's going to do some damage back to the monster. So the idea is to pull a ton of monsters um, in PvE, and then all of them will attack your pet, and they'll eventually kill themselves to the um, the focus shield. Also, you get an AoE life tap. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but it's a decent AoE. So once your pet's created enough aggro with a focus damage shield, you can AoE nuke them down. You also get... Um, a casted little life or power drain, I should say. So the spec, I don't know. It's not great. I guess you could use it in RVR. Let me let me just show you the damage on this stuff real quick. So let's see dual challenge. Get myself dexes and acuity real quick. Dual accept. Alright, so this power leak, power tap. Hits decently hard, you know, it's a uh, keep in mind my shaman has like no resist, but 
it's a 189 delve spirit dd so not bad um i guess it's okay it's not the worst line i've ever seen but it is pretty bad especially when you have a line like darkness um your aoe nuke let's see spirit damage as well just a it's a it's a big race it's 400 race you know hits for about 310 um other things you get in this line gonna be this little uh pvoe um so this is just a pvoe snare i guess actually this is this isn't that bad actually okay because you can use this on root immune targets and it doesn't give root immunity and it's a it's a pretty big snare it's a 75 percent snare um and it lasts 15 seconds so i'm sure it's affected by debt i would imagine it would be i'm not 100 percent sure but i think this would be affected by debt but this is kind of cool so this is a, a, a way to peel off people if they're snare immune um issue is it's pboe it's not like aoe so i had to be like right up on there so that makes it a little difficult but it's a, it's a cool spell nonetheless and then you get just a power transfer you just give your power to someone else so if someone else needs power in a fight or PVE or something, you just throw that there. You also get an instant res um, with this line. It's a 35% three-minute reuse instant res. Um, it's cool. It's a free PR without the perfect recovery. It's a free instant res, pretty much. Um, that's going to pretty much do it, except for one ability we're going to talk about in a second. It's Gates of Valhalla. But that's going to do it for Spirit Line. Um, it's okay. I guess it has its merits, but darkness is just insane. Now, what this does is it creates a little gateway on the ground. Um, it's going to, it's an eight second cast time, takes forever to cast, 10 minute reuse. But what happens is um, it just spits out pets essentially for 45 seconds. Uh, so we'll cast it here. You can see it's a very slow cast time. My dex isn't capturing anything probably on this guy. It's, I don't know his template, but. Okay, so there's the gate. And what it's going to do is it just it's going to throw out some some pets i would imagine i hope it's not bugged or anything but so it's not casted any pets yet so that's cool anyway okay there, there's one so this pet runs out um and i guess in the realm duel it's kind of bugged yeah i, I guess i guess we're not in a, yeah we're actually in a duel so it spits out pets every every so often it's not a great ability um, the pets die pretty much as soon as the next one spawns. It seems they only last 15 seconds, but it is what it is. Um, free pets, I guess, long cast time, hard to get off in a fight, but if you can get it off, cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's, that's summoning in a nutshell. And then you can go subspec spirit or subspec darkness. It doesn't really matter. I don't think with the spec, I, I wouldn't go this in RBR if I was RBRing with it. I think darkness is a thousand times better. But anyway, it's there if you want to do it. Good for PV. Back to this SM. We're going to go over the uh, the rank 5 real fast. Spirit Martyr. And sorry, this video is probably going to be a little long. These caster videos tend to be pretty long because they have so many different spec lines that have to go under, like baseline and all the different spells. But bear with me. Um, so this is a pretty cool ability. Um, what it does, at least what it says it does, is it releases pets, it releases your pet. Um, so it released my little spirit warrior friend here. And we'll get a away from the other SM to not cause confusion. So here's our little friend here, our pet. What it's supposed to do is release him and then heal everyone around you within 2K range for up to 3,200 hits. It's a huge heal. It's gonna pretty much cap out everyone, I'm pretty sure. Um, I guess depending on how healthy your pet is. I, I guess if you release your pet at super low health, it's not gonna heal as much. Um, I don't have, I've not tested this enough to really to know all the ins and outs. It's been forever since I played a sim. Um, and if you're soloing, it's the heal's not going to be as big. But if you're grouped, it's going to be a huge heal for everyone in your group. And it's supposed to sacrifice your pet. It doesn't. Um, as you can see, I just used it. And my pet's still alive. You know, he's still chilling out, being a spirit warrior. But heals everyone. 10-minute cool, uh, reuse timer. Use it when you're dying or your group's dying and you need to save someone. Um, good rank 5. Anyway, that's pretty much it for SM abilities. Um, the only thing I didn't talk, well, I, I did talk about it a bit, but maybe I need to harp on a little more is how good the pet intercept is. Um, a lot of SMs get mocked, but sometimes if you're fighting just like one person, you may not even need mock. If your pet can intercept enough attacks, 
uh, and you can stay alive and just throw out a life tap every, you know, three or four seconds. You know, you throw out a life tap, you get erupted, and then you throw out another life tap because your pet intercepts another two or three hits, and then you'll just whittle someone down because you're getting health while they're getting nuked. Um, so that's a super, super good little deal. Anyway, moving on to realm abilities. Um, let's see. Yeah, dex breakpoints. So RAs for SM. Uh, dex breakpoints are always important for whatever your uh, whatever spells you're using. So on SM, you're using a uh, a 2.8 second spell, and then a 2.0 second spell and a 2.5 second spell, and sometimes a 3.0 speed spell. So you got a ton of different spells. You're gonna want at least, in my opinion. 374 decks, but you're probably going to want 392 decks. And that's that 392 decks is going to give you the breakpoint for uh, your 2.0 speed spell. So you'll be able to cast your resist debuff really quick. So maybe go for 392 decks. I think there's a, a breakpoint for the 2.5 spells at 398. So maybe go for 398 decks for your life top. Um, dex breakpoints, I'm just going off of what other people have posted in the past. I haven't done any research on breakpoints, but. That's just the knowledge that's out there, the information that's out there. Whether you believe breakpoints or not, it's up to you. But I, I believe in them. Uh, they seem to make sense. But I think there is a 398 dex breakpoint for 2.5 second spells. So maybe get that. At least 392. But six more decks, not too hard to get. So maybe go for 398 decks on SM. Especially if you're cobalt, pretty easy. So however much all decks you need to get that, do that. Next, <clears throat> we'll look at some... Uh, some active abilities, purge, always good. Um, at least purge two probably, because that'll be an instant purge. So you can purge slams and walk away or purge a mez and be instantly out of it. Um, I like to get purge three a lot of the time just because I like the 10 minute cooldown. Um, if you want purge four, that's a seven and a half minute cooldown. Purge five is a five minute cooldown, but I always usually get purge three on a lot of my casters. Um, next, the big, active a lot of SMs get is Mastery Concentration, allows you to be uninterruptible for 30 seconds, and then you do 75% of your normal damage. Not 100%, but it's still a lot. Mock is great on life tap casters, um, just because it allows you to sit there, take damage while nuking, getting health back, killing your targets. Um, also good in groups when you just need to assist really well. Maybe it's not for the life um, drain, but it's just to get damage out. Mock's just an all around good RA. It's expensive. In my opinion, you pretty much need Mach 5 or Bust. Maybe Mach 4 might be okay, but if I'm going Mach for damage and for life taps and stuff like that, I always wait until I can get Mach 5. Um, that said, I think you do need to get some damage passives before Mach makes sense. So maybe when you're like rank 7 or something, you can get away with Mach because you can get a little bit of Aug Acuity, a little bit of um, Wild Power and Master Majory, and then get good Mach and some Purge. Because if you get stunned, you're in mock, you're screwed. Um, other things, Bedazzling Aura, <clears throat> decent. Um, it's hard to get on SMs, in my opinion, because you need that damage. But this gives you uh, magic damage mitigation to your group. Let me see how much it gives real quick. Bear with me. R A. Come on. Bedazzling Aura. So at Bedazzling Aura 5, it's a 40% magic reduction, magic damage reduction. Um, Level uh, Bedazzling Aura 1 is 10%, Bedazzling Aura 2 is 15 Bedazzling Aura 3 is 20, uh, 20%, 4 is 30%, and 5 is 40%. I probably wouldn't buy this, but you can if you want to. Uh, Negative Maelstrom wouldn't buy it. Um, just like a little dot ground target deal, I guess. Um, it's been forever since so I used it, but it's not worth it, uh, in my opinion. Maybe for keep sieges and stuff like that, it could be okay, but in my experience, not worth it. Raging power, just keep some power, not worth it. So yeah, pretty much the only stuff you'll get is Mastery Concentration. Juggernaut increases the level of your pet. Good for PvE, mm, I wouldn't use it in RVR. Only lasts for a minute, it's a lot of points to invest to make your pet rip. What you'll need to get really, the main things you'll focus on, Aug Dex. Uh, and then I like to get Wild Power. Wild Power gives you uh, increased spell crit chance. So that's great because your spell is just an extra chance to crit. And then I always like to get Mastery of Majory. Just increases your spell damage by a certain percent. Um, as you can see here, Mom 5 is a 7% increase. Um, and that scales up uh, the more points you put into it. 
it doesn't scale up, but you get more percent per point. And Aug Acuity, you, you uh, do more damage by the more acuity you have. So always get some Aug Acuity. I like to buy, if I have to choose which one to level first, I always like Master or Wild, Wild Power more because I like the crit. I like the spike, the unexpected random 100 extra damage or 200 extra damage on my nuke versus the consistent small increase from Master Major in Aug Acuity. So I'll always have Wild Power, more points in the wild power, and then mastery major right below that, and then augacuity below that. Um, so those are your damage RAs, those three ones. Um, and you'll always be able to put some points into those. You're never even get those all capped out, <laughs> unless you're like rank 13 or 14, I guess, maybe. But uh, other things you can get, physical defense gives you some secondary, phys or secondary uh, resist to slash, crush, and thrust. So that's good for keeping you alive versus tanks. Um, and that's pretty much what I would get, really. Aug Dex, and then get Wild Power, Master Major, Aug Acuity, if you want some defense, PD, and then Purge and Mock. That would be my SM spec. And I would just increase, I'd get Purge 2 or 3. Um, actually, get my Dex to wherever it needed to be. Get my Dex to 398, and then buy Purge 2, Purge 3, something like that. And then I would put a bunch of points into Wild Power, Master Major, Aug Acuity. And then once it made sense, I would start. I would, I would buy Mach five, and I would lower my damage arrays a little bit. But like I said, I would I would wait until I could have like at least power majory and acuity three or four, just because that really helps your damage. And I think if you get Mach five without any damage arrays, you're just not really going to hit hard. So I would wait a little bit until I can get some damage arrays in Mach. Um, and then after that, just keep increasing your damage arrays and maybe some physical defense every now and then. Um, that would be my RA spec for solo and small men, or sorry, for solo and in groups. Um, yeah. So maybe keep that in mind. As far as your MLs go, Convoker is probably the best bet. You get a speed warp. This puts down a little node. Um, anyone that comes into the, the radius, you can see here this little blue line, they lose their speed. Um, so it's good for when you need to run away or if you just take away people's speed, it's important. Brittle Guard gives you another little, uh, gives you a little friend. He takes a hit for you, a single hit. He dies after that, and then he's gone. Um, summon Mastery, this is really good for SMs because it increases the level of your pet. Um, increases it by more in PVE, but um, slightly less in RVR. Makes it bigger, makes it do more damage, and makes it uh, take less damage too from melee and things like that. So in fights, ML9 your pet, have fun. Uh, let's see, trap, doesn't it's, that's, that's so it's trap, I guess how you pronounce that. It's just a little trap you put on the ground. It's a DD trap. If you stack up a bunch, it might kill someone. Um, just as a little bit of damage. Power trap does the same thing, except for it drains your power, doesn't do damage. Uh, presence node puts down, sorry, I'm still casting this trap, taking forever. So anyone that runs over that's going to take damage, and it's going to go away. This little presence node puts down a little something similar to a speed warp, but within this area, you have an increased chance of seeing stealthers. So that's good. If you if you know a stealthers around, throw that down. Uh, War Crystal doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Battle Warder, not useful, in my opinion. Uh, Crystal Titan, ground target effect, good for keep sieges, things like that, PV. You put down a big old, uh, big old dude, and he hits hard, hits people pretty hard, and he uh, can take a ton of damage. So if you put it in the PV area, it'll aggro a bunch of mobs. They'll attack it. You can deal with them however you want. Anyway, this little dude grows up to be a big guy. Like I said, it's good for siege, I guess, in tight corners. He hits hard. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that's Convoker for you. You can go Stormlord if you want, but I don't know enough about Stormlord to really talk about it right now. Maybe I'll do a video if people want to hear more about Stormlord, but go Convoker, especially on SM. The ML9 pet helps a ton, and Speed Warp is so important. Um, other than that, so we, we went through RAs, um, ML lines, and spec lines and stuff like that. So we'll talk about your template. Um, SMs, you're going to want to uh, obviously cap out things like spell duration on your TOA resist or your TOA bonuses. Um, things like spell range, uh, spell damage, resist, pierce, cast speed. You got to get those to 10. Um, super important that those are capped out. Um, obviously get your, your decks and your, uh, 
your piety as high as you can because those are your cast speed and your damage stats. Um, get your con hits as high as you can. Your uh, your 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 melee resist, your cast resist, all all those have gotta be gotta be pretty high. I'm checking really quick to see what the um, the curse set gives you for SMs. I think it increases the duration of your uh, resist debuffs, but I'm not 100% sure. So let me check that real quick. But um, other things you want in your template. Uh, Bracer is always pretty cool. Um, it's a PBOE 50% uh, chance to fumble for any any enemies in the area. Last 30 seconds. So it's a good anti-tank deal. Um, also, if you want, you can use Zopets, which summon little, little creatures to go out and interrupt essentially a bad guy. So show you those real quick, just in case you hadn't seen them. Um, let's see, who's that? See, summons out these guys, it's like three or four of them. They go out and attack, interrupts, all good stuff. It's a little bugged out in PvE, or sorry, no, like a realm duel, but in RVR it summons a bunch. Um, let's see. Let me let me find this. Uh, let me find this SM set real quick on housing so I can I can figure out what the bonus does. Um, other than that. I like things with a uh, melee resist charge. I don't have any on my SM, but things like uh, Dragon Scale Bracelet um, is one of them. It's not easy to template, but you'll probably want to template something like one of the Vigilante belts, or um, I can't remember all the uh, all the the items with melee resist charges, but there are a bunch of them. Uh, I think there's some R light ones now that have them. Like there's a gem that has uh, a melee charge on it, melee resist charge. Things like that. Definitely look at putting those into your template, um, just because it helps with your uh, your melee resist a little bit. Um, also, if you can, curse blood gauntlets are cool because it's an instant twenty five percent heal. If you can fit them in your template, that's going to be about six hundred extra health when you use it on SMs, pretty much. So, look at using that. Sorry, still trying to find the. Uh, I should look this up before I start the video, but we're here now. So sorry. Let's see, I'll, I'll let you see me search on housing for it real quick. <laughs> uh, here it is. Okay, yeah, so it's this essentially, if you use all three items in the curse set, which is robe of the, or whatever, the dark magister, I guess is what it's called. Let's see. I'll find them for you, dark magister. So if you use the chest piece, and I think it's the arms and maybe the legs of the, the boots, there's not a lot on mid right now, um, then you'll be, uh, oops. That's why, because I have chest piece. Anyway, so it's the legs, the arms, and the chest piece. If you use all three of these, your stat debuffs last 75 seconds instead of 45 seconds. So that's kind of cool. Not necessary, but it's kind of nice. Um, so try to get those in there if you want to. Um, other than that, you're kind. it's kind of up to you, whatever you put in here. The SM cloak, I need to figure out what that does, actually, because I'm not 100% sure right now. Cloak the Loyal Spirit Master, here we go. Okay, so the SM Loyal Cloak, um, one use is it resets your quick cast. Uh, so that's okay. You can, if you have to quick cast a demes, like say a bunch of people in your group get mezzed, and then you have to, like, you're like, oh crap, my, my group's mezzed. I need to, uh, need to demes them, and I'm interrupted. Maybe I have someone stuck to me. So I have to quick cast. So I quick cast a demes, and then I use my cloak, and it's going to reset this quick cast so I can quick cast another demes. Um, also the other, the other use on that is a 12% melee resist charge. So that's good. That, that makes it to where you don't have to worry about fitting another resist charge in your template. Um, it's 12% instead of the other ones, which are 10%. So it's a nice little melee resist buff there. So maybe look at putting that in your template, not a must, but yep. Infernal sleeves. Um, I don't have them on this guy cause I'm not in an actual template, but they give you extra power regen. Maybe look at using those if you're not using the set armor. And that's pretty much it. There's there's a lot of stuff you can throw in a template. Um, it's been a while since I have uh, templated a mid caster, so I'm not really sure what you can put in your template, but you can probably get a lot of stuff in there. But definitely spell duration and all your other damage, um, TOA bonuses, and dex and QB. Those are your staples. Anyway, that's been SM. There's probably a lot I missed out on. Um, a lot of stuff to do with this pet. This pet's super good with the stuns and stuff like that and the intercept. Um, it's been years since I played a sim, so I'm not 100% up to date, but this at least gets you the basics. There's probably some advanced stuff that you could figure out um, on your own, or if I ever played this thing and I figure out some cool new advanced stuff, I'll make another video. 
Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any tips, suggestions, questions, anything, put them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Thanks again for watching. That was uh, the Spirit Masterclass video from Midgard. See you guys.